Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by Nate Weitzer. He's on the East Coast, and we're getting well ahead of these Game 7s in the NBA on Sunday. Got two of them, one each in each conference, obviously. Got the Nuggets and the Timberwolves out there west. And in the East, we've got those Knicks and Pacers once again going at it in the garden here. Game 7 going to be a great day of hoops, that's for sure. We're going to be bringing you uh, best bets and player props for both games. We're kicking it off with this Knicks Pacers series in this episode. Going to have everything Nuggets and Timberwolves in the other one. So make sure you check that out. Subscribe to the page. Continue to follow along. Like I said, be getting best bets of all sorts and those player props here in one video for the Knicks and the Pacers. Also want you to head to the lines.com and use everything that we have up on the site right now, including that prop finder tool to make sure that you are getting the best available odds and lines that these books are giving us in the postseason. Nate, let's go ahead, get right into it. Knicks and Pacers, baby, who you got? I mean, you know, you already know who we had. Uh, it was Knicks and seven, two games ago. Uh, hopefully you tailed us and got that plus plus one fifty. And I mean, now it's a little concerning that Josh Hart is going to clearly be limited. Like he's almost certainly going to play because he's just that kind of tough dude. But this isn't like a knee you can or an ankle you can shoot up. Like this is an abdominal strain that's going to impact his ability to rebound the basketball and play defense. I'm still down with Knicks minus two and a half. I think you're probably getting two and a half points of value because of the Josh Hart situation. And I mean, in Jalen Brunson, we trust it, it, it's Brunson coming home after literally the worst stretch of his career. He's never gone 0 for 11 in a row before he at home in this series, averaging 39 a game versus 25 on the road, plus 34 on, in terms of his offensive rating. And I mean, I, I like Deuce McBride a lot as the secondary option for him with with the way the Pacers are blitzing him and forcing other guys to beat him. Alec Burks, also very solid running that second unit for short stints here. And I expect DiVincenzo to break out of his slump. So th there's a lot of guys I trust on the Knicks, regardless of Josh Hart. Uh, would obviously like for him to be healthy and be that that kind of heartbeat of the team. But, I mean, who do you trust on the Indiana Pacers on the road? And this is exactly why we were saying Knicks and seven, regardless of how this plays out. Like, I have no faith in anyone in their starting lineup on the road. I have no faith in Rick Carlisle. I have no, I only have faith in TJ McConnell, basically. <laughs> and he's apparently only going to play 20 to 25 minutes, no matter what. And I mean, he just doesn't have the same kind of like role players coming with him away from Indy. I mean, Halliburton's minus 50 on the road versus plus 58 at home. A lot of people were like gassing up Siakam as like, wow, what a great game. 25 points in game six. Like that was not an impressive game. Like, I mean, he's getting mismatches all over the place, but he is soft. Like he, I always often told you, like he gets out of bed going, Hey, to try to get the whistle. Like, it's just like, fin try to finish. Like this is, this is going to be a very physical game. The refs are not calling shit in, in the entire playoffs and regular season. So I don't expect Siakam to have much success. And he's been like 60% or worse at the line, even when he does get to the line, but like out there begging for calls in a game seven is not a, a good way to go here. Expect the Knicks to absolutely control the boards as they have, uh, even without heart. I mean, the the rebounding rate discrepancy when they're when they've been home has been crazy, um, and, and just yeah, I mean, Precious and Chua go out, go right out there and and fill in those those heart minutes if needed, and get boards, and and it's just like Brunson brings us home. Like um, yeah, I mean, you got a same game parlay, but I also hit this similar, which is Brunson to get twenty five or thirty if you want better odds. Deuce to get at least 12 because they definitely need his scoring and Knicks to cover at like plus 150. Uh, I think it's a pretty clear correlation of like who they need to score right now because like Hardenstein and Precious, they ain't getting their, their shots up. It's going to be all on these guards. Yeah. Plus one for everything you said. I don't I, I don't trust anybody on Indy. I, I really don't. Like you said, I mean, I, I, Tyrese can can show up better, I suppose. But I mean, last game still only had the 15. I mean, they didn't maybe didn't need it, but. Yeah, I don't. I don't trust him in a big situation to dot to take over. Honestly, what I really noticed in this series more than anything is he can't go left. Ty Tyrese Halliburton does not go left. I don't think that's talked about enough. But him trying to go right uh, multiple times, it was like so funny to watch him just circle around, start to go left, and then the screen comes and he just goes to the right. Then it gets cut off to that side from McBride, right? And then he tries to keep just going right until he's basically out of bounds, right? He's like fake left, go right, fake, and then all of a sudden he's out of bounds, essentially with no room to work with. And it was just so unimpressive. Um, the complete, almost like inverse of, of Jalen Brunson's ability to, to to do that stuff and not rely on sheer foot speed to, to get around guys and stuff like that, but quickness and basketball cuts and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I don't, if you, if you think Halliburton should be higher on the list of people that we trust, no, no, it's, we, we don't like TJ McConnell is a computer. He does the same moves 
every time and then gets to his spot, can jump on a dime and score. So he's just practicing the same thing over and over. I trust that as a go-to move way more than Tyrese Halliburton around a screen pulling a 30 footer. I, I don't I don't trust it. He hasn't gotten into the lane. We haven't seen it. Um, so, yeah, I'm still I'm still with the, the Knicks pick because I think the garden will uplift uh, the others enough. And that like Josh Hart would be a big part of that. But I'll, my same game parlay here is, is Jalen Brunson 30 plus with the win. And I just took the money line. I mean, there hasn't been a close game at this point. The Knicks pushed on a on a five point loss that they had right in like game three or whatever it was, where they lost one eleven one oh six. The spread, I think, the closing line was about five in most places. So um, that was about the only game that was that was close. So if you, my point is like, I, I kind of chickened out with the money line. There's you you kept the the regular spread in yours, but I also have Brunson thirty. I think Brunson thirty is fine. Like I, I don't think they win without Brunson 30. I, I know that like D- DiVincenzo is probably going to do his thing, but I don't think it can be both DiVincenzo and McBride necessarily. I think at least one of them, I'm, I'm going with the, the DiVincenzo game. Now that his props been a, it's basically 17 and a half still, I think there's a 16 and a half hanging out there um, because he had such uh, a, 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 he's got 17 last game. I don't want to say he had a bad game. He just, he didn't do enough to be otherworldly at, in, in a sense to win this, the, win that game last game and, and really keep them around. A lot of his threes would have kept them around if they had gone in and they just didn't three for eight isn't bad, but I think you're going to see a lot more like four for 10, four for 11 from DiVincenzo tonight and then also getting to the rim and just affecting the game. And then McBride, I agree with all that stuff as well. So I like both those guys. But for Brunson, just to add to what you were saying, like when he gets home like this, too, and and he's got the crowd as well, I think that's a big part of it. He came alive in the second half yesterday, just took a while, honestly, like if he had had a, a, a fraction of the game in the first half that he recorded in the second half, it would have been a lot closer as well. So it's there's still a lot of outs for for Brunson in the ways that he can score more. Um, I don't like the assists. I, I don't agree with that. I don't if anyone can give me a good explanation for why they're at seven and a half uh, and juiced all the way to the under. But like, I would be happy to include this in my parlay under seven and a half assists for Brunson. In addition to this uh, on DraftKings, we'll bump this up from plus 104 to about plus 158. Um, and I'm plenty fine with that, with the extra 50 cents or so on that one, just for him to go under eight, because it's it's such a, the implied probability of the under is at like 60% as well from the, from these books. So clearly they don't think he's going over, but they're giving us that seven and a half line. Cause he's going to have the ball in his hands the whole time. Nobody has more touches in the playoffs. Even Joker at this point, he's got more touches than Joker. Um, he's been the most effective sort of like driving, guard or just driving player in uh in the playoffs as well so that's what we know he's going to be doing here is getting into the lane 35 shots last game at home like would you be sh- in any way shocked if this man takes 30 shots in this game i think you have to project him at a floor of 28 shots um so yeah 30 plus on that he's been pretty efficient in, in this, the last like four or five games and he doesn't even need to be that efficient if he's going to take that many shots to get us 30 points so uh yeah i'm on the knicks to win because they'll pull through and even if this is a close game going into the fourth we both trust the knicks way more in the fourth quarter because we both trust brunson way more in the fourth quarter so we're, we're same vibes here uh and i'm just going to take that parlay with brunson for 30 plus in the uh the, the money line Yeah, I mean, that's another point I was going to make for the Knicks is that like they were still like within striking distance with Brunson having the worst performance of his career, basically, in the first half and just like missing makeable shots. It's not like Neesmith was like shutting him down. He was getting to his spots and missing and just missing makeable shots. And and with Josh Hart, like probably more bothered than he'll be in this game, because I mean, the initial injury happened, like whatever they can do for treatment, it's not that much for an ab strain. But it's probably going to be a little bit better than it was during that game uh, when things kind of fizzled out for them because they didn't have that. And uh, I think we also have to address the rest situation to a degree, though. I mean, because of what happened on Sunday, game four, 36 hour layoff. But this is kind of an inverse in some ways that like we saw what happened game four to five when they sat the fourth quarter, the starters, and they got some extra rest here. And on that like little extra rest, plus the bounce back, plus the energy of MSG, the Knicks just came out and absolutely took their heart. Like the Pacers were like befuddled and had nothing, nothing (laughs) to give you any confidence that they're going to win in MSG here with all the all the chips on the table. Um, And and when you're speaking of the energy from MSG, that's why I love Dante DiVincenzo, who was last seen getting to the garden to chant his name with just an absolutely insane energy game. The stat line did not back it up, though, right? Eight, seven, and four did not make a three in game five. So, I mean, that won't get you a ton of props, but I think he does hit a few threes here, whether you want to go over three and a half threes, which is plus 140, definitely worth the juice there. And then I think you can hedge by going over seven and a half rebounds assists, which is minus 140. And maybe you get both to hit. If if you if you just get the rebounds assists, then I guess you're breaking even there, uh, depending on the units you a lot, but... I think with Josh Hart out, like he's going to have to be that kind of energy guy 
on the boards and and as a secondary playmaker. I mean, you mentioned Brunson being low assist. I guess the the Knicks are kind of going to be a low assist team based on how the Pacers are blitzing him and, and you know just just kind of like all right, you catch the ball thirty feet and then you got to make a play. Uh, DiVincenzo is one of the guys I can picture making a play and then just dumping it down low for one of those assist opportunities. I mean, he's averaging 5.3 rebounds, 3.3 assists in these last three. Um, and, and I mean, he's just absolutely slumping uh, in terms of his three point shooting, but you could see him break out of it mid game in game six, right? Starts over three or over four finishes the first half six for seven and hits all three threes and had 15 at the end of the first half. So yeah, 17 and a half points. Also a fine look here. If you don't want to go with the with the hedge opportunity, I'm saying here, he was cold in in three games in, against Philly, right? Until it was nut crunching time in Game Six, and then what? He goes five for nine. He has four rebounds, seven assists, and then he proceeds to go eighteen for thirty two from deep the next three games, just absolutely unconscious. He's not a guy I worry at all about short rest. Like he will be just fine. He's in rhythm. People saying like he doesn't have his legs. Like that's not what I'm seeing when he's missing these shots. Like these shots are barely missed. He is fine. Very, very good shooter who's going to get opportunities because the Pacers are blitzing Brunson. Um, and maybe they'll pay a little more attention to Deuce McBride after he torched them. Uh, and that opens things up for DiVincenzo. And, and also the offensive rebounds will open things up because that every offensive rebound seems to be like, boom, wide open three. And DiVincenzo, he, he says they practice that shit, and he's ready to just knock them down in big spots. Yeah. I was going to say that too. My, my, my main two points to support you. Yeah. That, I mean, I think you have to pay a little bit more attention to Deuce. Um, I mean, he got out, he hit a lot of threes. He was four for six, but he also got out into transition, had like layups on galore as well. Uh, I don't think you can just give him a lane um, and, and just stick to, to DDV like that. Now, obviously it's been um, a priority for them since basically like he went crazy and got those, that 35 there in, in since game four and five in, in this series. And even obviously the last one, it's been like, yo, this dude is not allowed to beat us similar to how Michael Porter jr. Is getting locked up by Jaden McDaniels at this point in the other series, which we can talk about briefly in the other video. But um, yeah, for, for, for white Dante and this one too, like, yeah, I think the offensive rebounds, they do, they do practice that. That was my second point. Like that, that is a play. Like the offensive rebound is a play for them, which makes sense. It's like one of the more efficient, uh, you know, sort of plays in the NBA is get an offensive rebound. You're very likely to score off of it. So yeah, I, I'm I'm with Dante. I was on this this with you as well uh, ahead of time. I think you you take the points no matter what. Like I'm with the the threes here, but like the the, the points too. I, I, he's going over 17 in this one. Uh, in my opinion, I think he's good for 20. He's gonna have to be too because like yeah, with with Josh Hart struggling to shoot struggling to hit like a little floater in the lane because he really couldn't get any lift because it prop like, come on, man, if you've ever worked out abs for two seconds, even if you, you know, didn't tear it, you work it out and you try to pick yourself up with your core. It's going to hurt a lot. You need that in basketball, dude. I, I, I really wish that I could say Josh Hart will just like fight through this, but to the points you've made as well, like, I don't think he can. And uh, to just fight through it, there's nothing to give him. It's just, I need my, my, my core muscle to heal um, in, in my body. And so that's, that's going to take longer in this game. He'll play, but he won't be the same dude. I would not be taking him for like rebounds leader stuff anymore. Um, and, and I'm just kind of staying away from Josh Hart props in general, but playing that injury knowledge with guys like Deuce and Dante DiVincenzo. And Deuce is at like 14 and a half points now. Still probably worth it. I mean, somebody's going to score. And I, I think Hardenstein comes back with another big game for the boards, which only helps the, the, the three-point shooting. But I think another man that'll help with the boards is Precious Achua. And the books don't know what to do with him right now because he is a little bit, uh, no, not a little bit. It, I think his minutes are pretty impactful, or impacted heavily by Josh Hart's availability. It's really that simple. But I'm going to go ahead and bank on Similar to how you need your ribs and Jared Allen, even if he came back, I was still down for Evan Mobley props. Same concept here for Precious Achua. Like, he's going to have to step in and, and be a rebounder a bit more. I think if Josh Hart is as, as limited as we think he'll be, then he's going to be a little bit more of a facilitator, honestly. Like, it'll be like, okay, you can run in the fast break and make these passes, but these upward movements for Josh Hart that include shooting and everything, it's going to be a little bit tougher. For Precious, it's going to be, yo, you're guarding Pascal. Go get those boards. Uh, and I, I loved him last game. And I, I mean, I, I probably wouldn't have just gone back to him because his props will probably be a bit higher than over 10 and a half PR for even money like it was yesterday. Um, but if, if it's it's around 11 to 13 and a half PR, I think you can take a little bit of that bump now that you've got the the Josh Hart news the way that it is. I mean, he was on the bench in pain, man. So for, for Precious, like he didn't really, once again, it wasn't about garbage minutes. That was a big part of my my argument and supporting evidence for, for yesterday's bet for him to go over on the PR was 
like the minutes are there no matter what because they do need him to be a secondary rebounder. When Pascal and Miles Turner have been on the court with just Hart and and Hartenstein on the court as as the defenders, like sorry, Josh Hart's not a good enough defender or big enough, I should say, defender to take Pascal in the post, and he was getting really easy bunnies. Uh, you you bring Precious in, it's a much different deal. Plus, they can't really go small now, and Precious has been really really effective when he's playing in the OB top in minutes. That's what we've seen a lot of. He, he's mirrored Obi Toppin's minutes and then gotten about three or four more on top of that as well. And now I think he mirrors Obi Toppin minutes, but he's back in the starting lineup, right? Or if Josh Hart's out there, maybe he's not back in the starting lineup, but you'll probably see Precious in the first quarter. Once, well, you will. You'll see him in the first quarter once again. There's only two dudes coming off the bench at this point. Um, so they're both coming in pretty early. Alec Burks came in uh, like the end of the first into the beginning of the second yesterday, but Precious is in there for starter minutes. And when he is, uh, if he gets 24 plus, he's gone over uh, this number about 75, 74% of the time when he gets 24 plus minutes i think you've got to slate him in for 24 to 28 at this point um he could see 30 once again depending on josh hart's availability so there's always the likelihood that he's in there for a bit more now you're at a six-man rotation uh but we don't have our daquan jeffries props up so we can't get anything else for the Knicks bench uh, but it'll be precious that'll be in there a ton with with josh hart's limitations yeah did you check in with your boy who was saying plus 600 for 10 points last game i did yeah. I asked him, I, 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 I hate when I get this information from dudes who I trust, but I'm like, can you please give me your reasoning? And he's like, no, he's got a score, man. All right. And we took Precious for 10 plus. For, it's great. Whatever. Let's go back to it. Sometimes it's that simple. I mean, sometimes you also get a nice break, which is Josh Hart can't right. move. And, and then Precious right. is in there for almost the entire rest of the game. But yeah, I mean, he did finish out in a blowout. He was like still out there late fourth quarter when the Knicks dragged themselves over 100 points. Thank, thank you for that, Alec Burks. Um, and, and Precious was out there. So, I mean... There's definitely a possibility where the Knicks blow out the Pacers again and already start looking towards uh, the Celtics and trying to get some rest for these guys uh, to have any chance here. But yeah, I mean, with Josh Hart in this state, like he's not going to heal. Like you got to take the Celtics futures. I mean, there there's no value on it right now, but like there's zero chance the Knicks are going to beat the Celtics. I concur and to be honest like i already felt that way without og it was really an ananobi thing and and maybe he comes back for that celtic series if they're even in it i don't want to count our chickens but yeah yeah celtics to be in the finals i don't know you're gonna get any juice on that anymore but you still could take the field it was plus 120 on FanDuel for the field instead of boston the other day uh this was uh yesterday it might still be around i I, yeah, I'm always going to take the field with plus money against one team, especially when I think there's four teams in the West that could compete, or at least three that could compete with the Celtics. So that is all the time that we have for you, though, in our Knicks and Pacers video. Also got those Nuggets and Timberwolves Game 7 up for, uh, for Sunday as well. So make sure you check that one out with best bets and player props all in one. And until we see you next, happy betting. Don't be scared. Don't be scared.